Welcome back to watching SABC News channel. This is SA Today. Now, John Stian Hazen says the DA under his leadership will offer people power and not state power. Stian Hazen was addressing delegates from Durban following his victory a short while ago. Unfortunately, that clip is still going to be ready for us. But again, just some lines that we picked up on uh, th that speech that we we're just about to roll is a fact. Well, first and foremost, John Cian Hazen congratulated um, Balin Tuli, saying that you had a good run. You maybe run all the way. In fact, uh, it was a tough campaign. And thank you very much for giving me such a good run. You did not make it easy, John Stian, John Stian Hazen, rather, saying to Mbalin Tuli following his victory, uh, saying to the DA delegates and all those voted uh, thereafter, saying we chose leaders on the basis of ideas, content of character. Long may this continue in our party. I'm here today, he says, to take the DA to greater heights Today I stand before you more energized than I did more than 20 years ago when I stood at the steps of Durban's City Hall. Let's take a listen to what else he said. I did not run to become the leader of this party for its own sake. I'm here today because I want to take the DA to greater heights and a fight for our country where each and every citizen has the power to build a dignified life. Today I stand before you even more determined and more energized than I was when I first climbed the steps of the Durban City Hall 21 years ago. The task ahead of us will not be an easy one. Our country is in serious trouble and colleagues, the stakes have never been higher. When I look around me, I see despair and desperation, poverty and hunger. I see politicians blaming each other all the time for what's gone wrong while our people suffer. And all this is happening despite the fact that the vast majority of South Africans are warm-hearted, honest and hard-working people just trying to build a future for their families. We're not a nation of thieves and criminals beset on destroying our country. And yet, each and every one of us is exposed to thievery, criminality and decline on a daily basis. As we journey through life, many of us no longer lift our heads to the horizon because we're too scared about what we see waiting for us in the future. How is it that this nation of hard-working and peace-loving people knows neither prosperity nor peace? The people of South Africa thought that democracy would put them in charge that the people would govern. All power to the people was the rallying cry. Instead, people now feel further and further away from where power lies. Over the past quarter of a century, you and our fellow citizens have been robbed of our destiny. Our dreams held hostage to bureaucrats and central planners. Just think of any problem you encounter in your daily life. At the root of it, you will find a state that is utterly incapable and corrupt, yet absolutely hell-bent on telling you what to do. Yeah. People don't have electricity in their homes because government insists on a state monopoly for power generation. People are poor because government crushes entrepreneurship, growth and job creation. Excessive state control is the reason why people can no longer take the train to work and why government would rather spend the little bit of tax money that's left yeah. to fund an airline that we do not need. Yeah. People who are destitute and vulnerable may soon stop receiving social grants because corruption is bankrupting our state. In every domain of your life, the incapable state is in the way of you getting ahead. And what is government's solution to the problems caused by excessive state control? Their solution is even more state control. Because the more the central planners fail, the more furiously the central planners plan. And so we face the prospect of the state taking away private property. In the future, you may no longer be able to take out private medical insurance. And there is a very real fear that the pension that you've spent your lifetime saving for will be taken 
away from you. No longer content with controlling you, the government now wants to own you. They're coming for your home, they're coming for your health, and they're coming for your savings. Now the good news is that the people of South Africa are starting to reject state control. People don't want to live a life of dependency on a failing and corrupt state. People are tired of being told what to do by rulers who only look out for themselves. People want to stand on their own two feet as self-reliant, autonomous human beings. They want power and freedom to make their own choices and build a life they value. This is what the DA will offer under my leadership. People power, not state power. People power, not state power. That's what John Stian Hazen has promised his uh, followers of, of the Democratic Alliance, uh, of course, briefing them there following his uh, election as the DA leader. Now, staying with the story, we are now joined. In fact, we were going to be joined by uh, John Duba a bit later on. Dolani Duba, apologies, a bit later on, who's a political analyst. Let's take a listen in what Mbalintuli had to say, of course, following the announcement of John Stian Hazen being the leader of the Democratic Alliance. She spoke to our reporter uh, a short while ago, and this is what she said that we've tried very hard to be um, as innovative and as creative as possible and I think that possibly uh, the voters just decided on very individualistic uh, merits um, but either way I think that democracy has been the winner today and I'm so incredibly proud of the party and the work that we've done I'm proud of my campaign team I'm proud of the campaign that we ran I think it was a first for both the party and South Africans so Waiting from here are you going to support the in in giving a human shoulder in, the run, in running the DA. Of course, he is now our leader and we will all get behind him and we will support him in any endeavor that he wants to do uh, in terms of trying to get the party to make South Africa a prosperous place. I think that that is the democratic outcome and we are all Democrats here. We're not fighting with the contestation of ideas. Um, and I'm very proud that KZN is also a winner in this uh, particular race because we're both from this province. So I hope that we'll be focusing a lot more also on trying to talk about KZN issues. The, con the next conference is will be coming, definitely. What will you be uh, again challenging this position? Oh, that's three years from now. It's very difficult to say. Who knows? Maybe John will not even need a contest uh, at that particular place. So it'll be far too early to say that right now. You're still very young and you've led the DA, uh, you play uh, the structure of the DA. Uh, are you going to be, we know that there is a provincial conference of the DA coming up in KZN. There are some people who say that uh, you are a good leader as you have an experience in the DA. Do you think that you may challenge that uh, or contest that point? That, uh, Con during the conference? No, I think that KZN has so many incredible leaders and I really think that you should be, uh, we should be allowing them to all take that space and so I look forward to supporting and campaigning for whoever is going to be running for KZN leader that I uh, believe has the merits to take us forward. Thank you very much, Mbalin Yeah, Thanks. A reporter there, uh, Bongani Gema, speaking to Mbalin following the results of the Democratic Alliance Federal Congress. Let's continue the story now. We bring in uh, Kolani Dube with us to have this conversation. Uh, Babu Dube, welcome to SA Today. Let's start possibly right there. Now, we were here. We were not fighting. We were all Democrats. It was for the good of the party. Earlier, I had Levi Doe, and I asked him the same question. Surely, she must be hurting. But is the DA going to hurt a bit more, as a lot was expected in this outcome, it was for the soul of the Democratic Alliance, a lot of people have been saying, and is John Stian Hayes in the right person to lead them to great heights? Uh, I think what you have to understand here is what is at play. Uh, we have to accept now that uh, the, the, this election of John uh, signifies the end of history in, in South African politics in terms of ideology. South African politics has managed to have what you call it a ideological unipolar by the election of uh, John. Because if you have noticed recently or for the past two weeks, there is one simple message in our country that capitalism as well as our so-called neoliberalism is gaining ground meaning that the mineral energy complex or the ruling elite in our, in our country has managed to solidify and also to cement its position 
in the South African politics. And so what we are seeing here is what is at play. But what is said is the fact that the so-called the vanguard of the poor and the workers, we don't see them saying anything for the past two weeks. Tito Mboweni made a budget, and that budget, by all its honesty, indicated that the neoliberalism, I mean, the neoliberalism in our country is taking control. Now we have John Steinhazen, who, with his party, are claiming that the issue of color is no longer important, of which in the past, uh, almost a month back, we've seen the Moy of uh, development, where also we said to ourselves, it seems as if the issue of class and race, I mean, the issue of race in our, in our country is evaporating. And you also heard Malema telling us about the, the, the incompetence of so-called the black, the black uh, lawyers. And so it seems as if in our country, there is this agreement within the political elite that the race in our country is supposed to be something of the past. But what is important now, of which I think what the political elite in our country unites them, is the advancement of neoliberal policies. And so what we see today, or what we have witnessed today, is just a script that started long time ago in our country. Mm -hmm. Bali ran on something that a lot of people said encouraged that um, girl from who's in touch with the Lokshini, that girl who's in touch with with uh, 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 Masababzini, the girl who who can bridge the gap between exactly what you've just said. So that's why a lot of the youngsters, and we had a lot of young callers onto the program today. Most of them saying that is what they looked at. Most of them saying that's what they hoped would win this DA Congress. Somebody who could bring both the young and old, the black and white, and Mbali, according to them, is what she stood for. Look, the, the, the South African politics, as I've said, is about race and class. It has nothing to do about where, where you grew up or where you, you went to school. As long you are going to fulfill the interest of the ruling elite, and then you will be uh, given a seat around the table of being a useful fool to the ruling elite. And so I think Bali was not a, a one of the candidates to be used by the ruling elite. And so the ruling elite rejected Bali some, some times back. Everyone knows that Bali was not going to win here because it was not fitting the puzzle of the ruling elite. And so Anyone who had a hope that possible Mbali was going to, to win surely is not understanding the South African politics or the politics at large, that politics is about the interest of the ruling elite and nothing else, nothing more. And so, as we know, in South Africa as well, if you are going to fulfill the interest of the so-called minerals energy complex, you are going to ascend to the highest position. But if you are going to antagonize the ruling elites of this country, trust me, you are not going to sit around the tables of, of power. And so in this case, I don't think, as I've said, Mbali was fitting the description of someone who can be used by the ruling elite. I mean, if you look at the numbers, as our SABC News senior reporter Natasha Piri gave to us earlier, 80% of the vote went to John Steenhazen. 80%. That is, is more than an overwhelming victory. Oh however you want to look at it, or overwhelming victory or overwhelming loss? Look, as I'm saying, we live under the dictatorship now of the so-called minerals energy complex, you know, and we have to understand that these guys are really brutal, you know, they are no longer playing with power. Hence, you see people even in, 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 in normal life, you know, at work, where you see that the, the so-called minerals energy complex is, is not really giving us time to breathe. Look at the state on enterprises, or how they, they, they can simply dictate who's supposed to go to, to so-called key strategic positions. And so, as I'm saying, the sad part is those who were historically condemned because of their skin pigmentation and also of their class position in our society, it seems as if they've 
they don't have a voice that can represent them. And I think it is time for them now to stand up and go outside these so-called ordained uh, political systems and structures of our country and to create their own systems and structures so that they can contest this historical dominant voice that we as South African who have been under its dictatorship since colonialism and apartheid and even post-apartheid. And so whatever that we are going to discuss, if we're not going to discuss how do we debunk the systems and structures, mm. we are not going to move forward. We will have an election of the ANC. The same contestation, it will be who will be a, a suitable candidate to represent the minerals energy complex and those who are not going who are going to contest the, the, re, the representative of the mineral energy co complex will find themselves at the end of what we call it or at the brutality of how the state's machinery uh, <laughs> can be used against those who would like to voice out if they are not comfortable about how our country is being run. And so what I'm trying to say here is that those who are historically condemned, those who were historical, historically uh, di dispossessed, really, they are supposed to rethink how can they represent them in this country because the historical structures and system, it seems as if keeps on excluding them. Yeah. Mr. Dube, here's a question. South African politics, are we at a point where our politics is not run on policy as a voter, or our politics is still basically on populism? I'll vote for you because I like you. What you say, I don't care, because this is what you say speaks to me. Or do we sit back as the voter and say, policies here are good, policies there are good, this is what I'd align myself with? Look, you know, what, what, what is so unfortunate is that there are no policies in this country that serve the interest of the poor. But the policies, since, as I'm saying, colonialism and apartheid, even 1994, they just serve the interest of the so-called the ruling elite. And then the few invited black uh, political elites, they just feast on the crumbs that falls uh, from the table of, of, the, of the ruling elite. And so when you talk about policies, in our country, we have to talk about policies that talks about readdressing the historical imbalances. And if we're not going to talk about those policies in a practical manner and institute legislations that readdress the historical imbalance and the skewed distribution of the resources in our country, I can assure you we are not doing anything. But what we'll be doing, we are still tracking the future of this generation or the future of, of South Africa into the same sinkhole. And so, as I am saying, we need to debunk this political and socio-economic system that speaks to the interest of the ruling elite. And we have to craft a system that speaks to the interest of the poor and the history and the interest of the dispossessed. Because if the dispossessed and the poor in this country are the majority. And so we can live under the dictatorship of the ma minority who exploits the majority. Because at the end of the day, that will polarize our country. And at the end of the day, it will keep on raising the issue of race, and it will keep raising the issue of tribalism, and it will keep raising the issues of xenophobia, unless if we address this wicked structure, economy, and also politics that we inherited from colonialism and apartheid. And so policies that ANC talks about, that DA talks about, and the EFF talks about, those are the things that they tell us in order to vote for them. But at the end of the day, the people of this country must be their own liberators by confronting the realities that affect us on a daily basis. Please do stay with me. We seem to have a caller. I'm being told that we've got a call on the line. We'd like to jump in on the conversation. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on SA Today. Sizwe Zondo, speak to us, Baba, from Echegwini. Sawana, Baba, who's your name? Can you hear me? Yes, Caesar. Continue, Baba. 
ओके दादा यस दादा आई थिंक ये ये नाउ एक्चुअली इज प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर इट्स ओपुचुअल कैन यू हियर मी आई कैन हियर यू बाबा कंटिन्यू बाबू जोन ओके यू यू नो बाय द लुक ऑफ थिंग्स इफ यू लिव व्हेन यू हियर गो टोन यू कैन फील दैट actually e e e e plex is only there for e votes only mm either than that i think brothers and sisters must think otherwise mm small cool so even if even if you look at e uh, e leadership currently in akt e e it tells you clearly that plex uh, don't have home in ta mm sibonga babu zondo thank you very much I, for joining us babu zondo yes babu zondo thank you very much we, uh, your line is cutting you you in and out so we can barely hear you uh, babu do do we before i come back to you maybe to have a comment on that let's bring in msindi sokubo from the eastern cape msindi see welcome to sa today what are your views from the outcome of the da congress sir hello sir yes sir please continue okay no what i can say is that EFF must be ready to be an uh, official opposition now. Why would you say because, that? Because because when you look at the situation at the DA you can see that the division is actually in Kuluwa Kulu that. Mm. Thank you very much. Even if you look at in a singa i ndlela le bamengayo ngoku it means that kupendile uh, ngayo. Thank you very much, Babu Kumo. Uh, let's take one more caller, Mudise Lusulu. Uh, speak to us, sir. What is your thoughts on the outcome of that DA, DA Federal Congress race? Ah, uh, those, those things of DA, we must be very uh, critical of how they uh, do their operations. Uh, yes, John Stenius Stenius and won the election, and all the other guys who were elected, it's fine. But in an election you must say how many votes this one got and how many votes it one got you can't tell us that is 89% south africa we are uh, battling with these things of a uh, uh, virtual vote ta was going to set a standard uh, 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 standard for us how we we vote moving forward virtually yeah. but They must tell us how many votes Rusido got, how many votes Mudis had. Mm. That's all I wanted to say. But congratulations to uh, John. Mudis, mm. thank you very much. Sir. Let me bring you back in, uh, Bob Dube. Um, you raised a point earlier, in particular for the black vote, that makes well the majority, if I can call it that, uh, that of the Democratic Alliance. They need that black vote. We know that there's been uh, calls. Uh, well. You've seen a lot of white voters departing the DA for other parties like the Freedom Front Plus. That black vote, we're hearing from the calls there, Cindy Sikumo, as well as Vusi earlier, saying, look, as far as they're concerned as black people, they've lost a chance. It is now other political parties, new political parties, if I can call it that, but not so new, for the EFF to become the official opposition in as far as South African politics and the landscape is concerned. Your take? Look, we have to ask ourselves, opposition to what? That's the most important thing, you know, because <laughs> EFF have been there in the parliament. Have we seen any meaningful uh, change in terms of social material condition of, pe of the people uh, who are outside the parliament who voted for, 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 for the EFF? The answer is no. And, but what we've seen, we've seen them to a certain extent surprising everyone going to a coalition with the so-called right-wing political organization like the DA. And so one wonders really that in South Africa do we have opposition? The fact of the matter is there is no opposition. What we see is that in that house of political merchants in parliament, those, 100, those 400 merchants there, they serve one common interest is to be the elite, the political elite in our country. And so we 
as the people outside that parliament. We have to understand the class contradictions and the class interests. The, those who are in the parliament, they have their own class interests. And us as voters, we have our own class interests. And so that's why I'm saying we need to rethink the method of representation of our interest in the South African politics. Because if we are keep, if you are going to keep on voting for people that at the end of the day are going to betray us, we are not going to go anywhere. Because we know very well that those political merchants in parliament, 400 of them, at the end of the day, they serve the interest of the minerals energy complex. That's the fact, they don't serve our interests. As I'm giving you a simple example of Moy Kluov, as I'm giving you a simple example of Ekolobeni, and in Guazulu Natal, an old man was killed, an ordinary man trying to defend the interests of the poor in Guazulu Natal was killed by the so-called the, 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 the big companies because they wanted to extract coal in that particular era. And so in South Africa, there is this contestation, a very brutal contestation between the ruling elite and us, the ordinary people. The fact of the matter also that worries most of us is the silence of COSATU, is the silence of the SACP who claim to represent the voice of the poor and the voice of the working class. And so it is clear now, as I've said, South Africa has moved to a, a ideological unip unipolar. We as the ordinary people in this country, we need to stand up and also fight for our interests. Let's take another call. Uh, our viewers are calling in. They want to give their input on this. Jeffrey Madwana joins us now on the line. Jeffrey, welcome to the program. What do you have to say, sir? Thank you very much, uh, Tabiso. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Tabiso. Yes, yes, go ahead. We can hear you, sir. Yes. Uh, I was talking about this thing because I think it's going to be a problem if because already results are out for valid your call has been placed on hold. Apologies that John seems to have put us on hold. Let's move on to the next call on the line. Um, just to confirm my director. Who do we have next on the line? Vuyo Gadasha. Vuyo, welcome to the program. Well, hopefully Jeffrey unholds us. Uh, what do you have to say, Vuyo? Uh, who are you? I'm good, self. Uh, you know, from, the, from what I've seen today, I think this will be the, you know, the end of the DA. Because obviously, I don't think, you know, it is the limit to to really speak to, not to the black to the black voters was even the composition of of, of, of the leaders you know they are all one so i don't think it should be anything for us black voters to vote for the da so we probably need to have an alternative Vuyo, what would your alternative be Vuyo? if you say that the composition of the leadership does not appeal to you what would be the alternative and are you going to them Vuyo, with by policy or are you saying rather the devil i would I know or are new or then rather these guys who do not represent me so to speak the alternative would probably the EFF was you know in the ANC obviously you know in the no no so probably it would be the EFF those could be the guys who could probably could represent for us mm. thank you very much there Vuyo Kadash is speaking to us there on the line uh, Baba Tuba let's bring you in here just before I let you go a passing statement, or a statement rather, from the new leader of the Democratic Alliance, John Stenhausen, saying, people power, not state power, under my leadership. Speaks directly to what you've been saying, that we've been run over by those who have their own, their own interests at heart. Is this just lip service from John Stenhausen when he says, it's people power and not state power that will get under my leadership? You know what, what, what you are saying is, is a very interesting thing, you know. We remember that there was a national party in this country and it was serving uh, predominantly the interests of the Afrikaners. And when the national party felt that they fulfilled their mission, opted to do what you call it a metamorphosis, it became something else. It became your Afri Forum. It became your solidarity. It became number of Afrikaner 
a civil society movement that serve the interest of the Afrikaner. That is a good lesson to us South Africans to say, power is no longer in parliament, but power is outside parliament. Today, Afriforum is there in the United Nations. And that is a clear indication that if people who are poor, if people who were dispossessed by colonialism and apartheid can organize themselves outside the traditional interpretation of representation through political organization, they can become formidable. And so I think the days of political organization in South Africa really must be revisited and we as so-called the black people in this country must really think deeper what kind of structures and what kind of system can really represent us because look this the current status quo of representation it serves the interest of those who have been oppressing the historically uh, dispossessed and the historically marginalized. And so this system is not saving us. Mm. The system serves your white monopoly capital or your mineral energy complex. It is time, just like what Afrikaner did, to move away from the historical interpretation of representation and create ours, like Afri Africa, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, Afroforum has done. And can we imagine in future, even if the black people in South Africa through their civil society organization can register the United Nations and talk about the crimes of apartheid and talk about the crimes of colonialism, it will be the day mm. when the next generation of, our, of, of black kids, of black children in this country will know that the power is not residing in Cape Town or in Union Building, yeah. but the power is residing in their own skill and in all in their own determination of, on how they want to shape the powers in this country. Bob Dube, and so the it, issue yes. of DA and black people must not be at the center of our contestation. It, we must look to the future and how those who are historically dispossessed represent themselves. Bob Dube, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Tolani Dube, political analyst, speaking to us there following, of course, the reaction of John Stian Hazen's election as the head or the leader, rather, of the Democratic Alliance that, of course, being at the DA Congress earlier today. Let's stay on the lines. Let's continue getting reaction from you, the viewer at home. Do give us a call on the line. I think my director will try and put it at the bottom of the screen there. In the meantime, do call us in. But... We've got Archie from East London Line. Archie, welcome to SA Today. What is your take? What is your thoughts with regards to the outcome of the DA Congress that happened a short while ago? John Stian Hazen, the new leader of the Democratic Alliance. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. Congratulations to John Stian Hazen. It's a very, very good day for South African politics. <laughs> Remember what the DA was offering in the beginning was central politics, not so much to the left but central politics. And you can hear today from the message of John that he's trying to bring those to the left and those to the right to the middle, to the center. And I think that's what politics are about. Uh, someone was shocked, someone phoned in, was shocked that there is so much difference in the voting. For me, as someone who was voting today, what I was looking for is that what are you putting on the table? What is the offer? Are you putting an ANC line? representing a DA, and that is what happened today. There was a clear message, there was a clear policy stance, and it was clear what John is going to do. And when you come as a leader, you are clear on what you are offering. That is what is happening. So I'm very, very excited uh, that there is a real offering on the table, and me, someone who does not want to be too much on the left and too too much to the right. Someone who wants to be in the center, uh, something that is offered, that appeals to everybody. I am very excited. Thank you so much. Archie, uh, before I let you go, you said you voted. You're obviously part of the DA. You're part of the delegates, 2,000 delegates. How was your view? How did you enjoy the new online way to do, well, politics, basically? Um, very welcome thing. Do you think it's the future of South African politics in general? It was it was a first time experience, I must say, but it was a good one for me because remember I was at home, I could take notes, 
I had all the files in front of me. I could do research. I could also, because we had a screen where we were able to talk. So as a policy uh, opinion is brought forward, the people present it, but we were also commenting. So you could look at the contributions. You had, uh, at some point, Premier Alan Windy coming in, speaking on some issues. Sometimes you raise someone, someone who specialized on that. You know, there was someone abroad at some point when we were talking, putting a policy around the issue of animals. Someone gave an experience overseas on some of the issues. So when you take that policy decision, it's a bit more informed. So for me, as much as I know that we are forced to be in this situation, I hope that the DA really in future can consider. Because remember, uh, DA conferences are different. I remember when I was in the ANC moving to the DA, I expected uh, to be singing and doing all of those, which does not happen in the DA. In the DA, if there is a policy offering, you must engage with the policy offering. There is no slogans. There is nothing. You simply say what you want to say. Someone argues directly with it. So this platform speaks directly to that so that you've got clarity when it comes to policies that you, you, you put forward. So I'm very excited. I liked it also. Uh, the response was quicker now because we're voting online and then we will wait and then something will go around and then you wait and then after that you are told that the system is consolidated and then you are given a result. So you know exactly what the percentage is, what the differences are. And which I think for me was live because remember when you touch the vote and you do everything, you might be worried, but when you vote directly from your phone, you know what you voted for, Achi, Achi, and apologies. then it gives you direct Achi, information. Achi, yes, sir. Achi, apologies. We're going to have to catch you there. <laughs> I know I can hear the excitement in your voice. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed for joining us. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. We had had another caller, Jabuli Nyambe in Johannesburg, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. We have to take this quick break. We'll be up at the top of the hour, then, of course, at 1600 hours. That's 4 o'clock, and hopefully we'll take uh, new, more callers like you and Jabuli Nyambe, who was in Johannesburg. We'll take you at our oh, well, after four o'clock so do stay with us right here on the essay today you're watching the essay today on the sabc news channel it's been an outstanding show so far stay with us